Kesa. My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, he go, man in go. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. Walk a cup with Steam, I win the championship this season. Yes, staying with football on the Sportsmax Zone and we're talking high school football in Jamaica now. The draw for the quarterfinal matches for this year's All-Island Knockout Tournament was held at the National Stadium East Field on Tuesday evening. These are the matchups. On the left, Mona High versus Glenn Muir. What a mouth-watering first-round clash that is. Kingston College versus Dintill Technical. And then on the right side of the bracket, Clarendon College versus St. George's College and Garver Maceo versus Heidel. Remember, of course, a new champion will be crowned this year because Jamaica College did not make it to the semifinals of the Manning Cup and by extension to the Champions Cup. We are joined in studio by our in-house football analyst and he has been covering a lot of schoolboy football action, Lejay Williams. Um, Lejay, welcome back. I'm sure you've seen the latest Sportsmax Zone promo and how you were referred to in that promo. <laughs> I'm Lejay, pretty sure I'm though you will not be showing that side of you this afternoon. I'm sorry, Well, well I, I, what I would like to say is I don't, I don't know why you're putting it like that as if you're not the one who said it. Oh, yeah. I was the one who said it. Oh, I, and Lige, I, I'm sorry on behalf of him because you know what? It's sad that that's the part that's used in the promo. Yeah, no, and, and you I'm did here. so many cool things I, on the exactly. show. Exactly, and it's him and him crony, you know. <laughs> him and him crony, Donald, they're just teaming up. But no, but he had to say okay to the promo, so you know what happened. Uh, do, do, you, do you want to say something else that we can use for the next promo? As, you as, have the as, next as, five as, seconds. I say quotable things every time I'm on here, so I don't have to say anything this time. <laughs> Let's talk about the Champions Cup matchup, shall we? They look quite mouth-watering, in my opinion, um, especially that Mona Glenmuir match. Yeah, that stands out to me immediately. That was the first matchup that was drawn, and I was like, wow, they're giving us some really heavyweight encounters right away. I think it was that, that that's an encounter I'll be hoping to see for a semi-final or a final. But yeah, it's two teams that I think match up really well against each other. They, Tactically, they match up really well as well because of the similar systems that they use. But then, at the end of the day, what they try to do on the football field is so different. It will be very interesting to see because, Ricardo, when we saw Glenmuir, we realized that not a lot of the Costa Cup teams were pressing them effectively. Yes. Mona are one of the better pressing teams in schoolboy football. So it will be really good to see how Glenmuir cope with that. And of course, it will be good to see how Mona cope with a team that attacks with five players and know how to infiltrate a backline with so many types of attacking flair and so much variety. So I'm really looking forward to that one, definitely. Yeah, you know, last season, Mona played Clarendon College in the opening round, and that was a, a massive first round contest. Of course, Clarendon College went on to win. Is this Mona team better than they have been before? And if so, do you expect them to put up an even tougher fight? Um, it, this time around in the Champions Cup? Are they better? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I, I do think that the players individually are, have improved, but in terms of some aspects of their pressing structure, how effective they have been in front of goal. Yeah, they're scoring goals, but I, I think with the absence of... They did retain a lot of players, but I think the absence of Zane Pinnock, especially from that team last year, has, has them missing out a bit of real attacking spark with the of course have a lot of really good goal scorers especially Denzel McKenzie who I think has been brilliant one of the better players in schoolboy football this season but maybe they're missing a little bit of attacking flair but we know that Craig Butler is their coach we know how tactically efficient he is so I'm not going to go to him and say that they're better than last season but I think at the very least they're just as good and I think that they'll put up a really good fight if not even take the game against Glenn Muir. Yeah, and they defeated Stats 2-0 to, of course, stop their group. And it's their second straight year in this Champions Cup competition. Do yeah. you think these are results and stats that coach will be using to, of course, get the guys riled up? And it will play a massive part in boosting their confidence. Well, one thing about the Mona lads, you know, I don't think they're ever short of confidence, them or their coach Butler, but um, yeah, I know he'll be using probably, you know, it, it's, it's us against them mentality for all of the games going forward. So I think that they will use the fact that they're here again, they're more cemented as a unit now in schoolboy football. 
and he'll be trying to galvanize them and push them forward. Yeah, if we can get that bracket again, I just want Lejay, the prediction guru, to call these matches. By the way, the quarterfinal matches will be played on Saturday at uh, two separate venues. So let's go prediction guru. By the way, uh, Nikola Tamchandani has been doing a fabulous job with these uh, predictions. I call him the cricket prediction guru. But if you can't get these right, Lejay, I'm going to have to call him in next week um, to predict football as well. So go ahead. Uh, usually, I would say no pressure, but there really is no pressure in these. I never feel that. Um, Mona Glenmuir, I'm going to go for a Glenmuir win. Kingston College, Dintil. Why well, it's hard to get better against Kingston College nowadays, you know, but I'm also going for a Dintil win. Clarendon College versus St. George's, I'm going for a Clarendon College win, but that's a stylistic battle for the ages as well. I'm very, I'm looking forward to that a lot. Garvin Marcel, Heidel, I think that's going to be a really close encounter as well. That's one that I'm not too sure about, but I would lean towards, I would probably lean towards Heidel. I'd lean towards Heidel for that one. Okay, what was your first pick, the Mona Glenmuir? Uh, I'm leaning Glen towards Glenmuir. Glenmuir, so you've essentially picked three the Costa Cup teams and one Manning Cup team yeah. into the semi-finals. I'm glad you did that because th there has been a suggestion that the quality of football in the, the Costa Cup region this season has been better than the quality of football in the Manning Cup. I'm not going to go that far, but I do think that, because as I mentioned the last time I was here, I do think that some of the best teams in Manning Cup didn't make it this far. But with <laughs> that being said, I do think that at the very top, yeah. If, you're, if we're now comparing the top four for the Dacosta Cup and the top four of the Manning Cup that we have in front of us, I do think that the top four of the Dacosta Cup are better in terms of their style and ability. Yeah, Liz, you just referenced the George's Clarendon College game just now as a style battle for, for the coaches because both coaches, Neville Bell from St. George's College and Lenny Hyde's Clarendon College, they love attractive football. They, their, their players express themselves. Um, you always like the coaching matchups. Yeah. You put you've taken Clarendon College here. Yeah, because I think from back to front they're the better team. I do think that St. George's have a lot of quality players and I do think, as I mentioned the last time, that they've shown an extra level of grit to them. I think that they've improved in that aspect. But in terms of football, in terms of the quality of players and the tactics, I will mention how systematically, how impressive a Lenny High team is, especially when once you've been in the system for such a long period of time, it's hard to bet against Clarendon College no matter who they play. We saw what they did to Jamaica College last season, yeah. dismantled them, and these are the same players who have gotten even better. So Clarendon College actually would be my pick for the entirety of the competition Ooh. for every single competition that they're up for this season. Yeah, so um, you did say last week or earlier this week when we were recapping the JC George's match that you credited St. George's College for the stout defensive acumen that they displayed in the game which was unlike a, a, a traditional St. George's College team because they're more affluent forward playing playing team so you think the defensive robust performance that we saw that held Jamaica College off won't be enough for Clarendon College no I don't think so because of the difference or is that you don't you don't think they can repeat that kind of effort a little bit of both because one it takes a lot out of you to put in that type of performance and secondly Clarendon offers a different type I mentioned the last time of how fluid they are so Jamaica College they're more of the Glenmore ill that I was talking about in terms of how Eurocentric they are in terms of what they try to accomplish it's more rigid with Clarendon you're going to have maybe their false nine Kaim Dixon dropping into defensive midfield drawing out a, a, a defender and I think it's just going to create gaps that maybe St. George's don't have the quality to overcome so that's why I'm going for Clarendon over everybody but especially in this matchup yeah. Clarendon over St. George's and let's be honest guys had Jamaica College taken their opportunities we wouldn't be having this discussion exactly about stout defensive performance coming from St. George's College because Jamaica College had all the chances in the world to win that game all right, meanwhile, for the first time, the Issa Water the Costa Cup final will be played at the National Stadium in Kingston instead of, of course, in the rural area. The announcement was made by the Issa president, Keith Wellington. We have always tried to ensure that our finals are played in the best available facilities. And so I think the big change this year is that we're moving the Dacosta Cup finals into the stadium. 
this is as a result of what is happening with Catherine Hall and obviously when you look at this the four semi-finalists and who are the teams likely to play in the finals, where they are from and you know the, 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 the like the support that they are like they are, they are going to carry. We decided that this year we'll try and um, get them pins and stay down. All right, let me get the, the, you guys in as quickly as possible because this has created quite the debate since the announcement was made last night. There are those individuals who feel that the Dacosta Cup final, which is the dominant rural area schoolboy competition, should never be played in the urban area, which is what is happening for the first time this year. I'm going to go to you first, Lance, because you covered schoolboy football in the 1970s and 80s. No, no, not 70s. <laughs> not 70s. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. 1980s What's that and deliberate? 90s. Mid 1980s. It's always deliberate with him. Yes, 1980s and 90s, Lance. <laughs> I yes, can't so tell. You've, you've, you've been. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first of all, when I when I started doing schoolboy football commentary, Jarrett Park was active. Yes. So, you know, big the Costa Cup games would be played at Jarrett Park. Since then, we've seen the building of the Catherine Hall Stadium um, in Montego Bay. So it is understandable that, you know, that's where those games are supposed to be played. But the Catherine Hall Stadium right now is is not being is not fit for 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 you. So I quite frankly don't think that um, the ISA officials had much of a choice um, for proximity. Obviously, it will be a problem. But the national stadium is the national stadium. Will it though? Because for when travel, you, when you, for when, travel, you know. Well, well, they're coming from from Clarendon. It's yeah. close. The national stadium for majority of the teams who are in the yeah, semi-final yeah. of the competition yeah. is closer than the Montego Bay Sports Complex, which is well, considered, of course, well, to be in the rural well, that, area. That comment just diffuses everything. So is, why is there an issue? The <laughs> national stadium is the national stadium. <laughs> every, every, every teenager would want to play a match at the national stadium. So I, yeah. I don't think there is an issue, especially now since there is no Jarrett Park and Catherine Hall Stadium at the level that you know, that meets, you know, the, the, Criteria. the euphoria of a, yeah. a schoolboy final. And that's yeah. exactly right, Sir Lance. I think this is a non-issue because yeah, is, yeah. uh, um, Mr. Wellington pointed out that, first of all, the proximity of the team, the three Clarendon schools and a rural St. Catherine school. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let me take you back for a second. When I was a young boy and I harbored aspirations of being a cricketer, yeah. I, I didn't want to play at, at Chedwin Park <laughs> I wanted to play at Sabina Park. Yes. All of these young footballers, as you mentioned, they want to play. But you're from Spanish Town. Yeah, so exactly. Ch you're saying Chedron Park is closer to where you, you're no, from. No, but I'm saying than, anywhere than else Park. I want yeah, to play Savannah at Sabina is, is the, the Mecca. Yeah, yeah. Just I like I'm, how, I'm just strengthening no. the point. Then. Just yeah. like how National Stadium is the Mecca, they, they grew up wanting to play football at the best possible place. They don't want to play football at States. No. Yeah. They want to play football <laughs> at the best possible place. That's not a, a venue befitting of such an occasion. Yeah. So. I am in full agreement of yeah. moving into the stadium, and I'm sure the Costa Cup fans will be it's there to, 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 to yeah. boost it up even yeah. more. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I will say, though, um, is that even if the Montego Bay Sports Complex was up to par at this stage, yes. given the teams that are in the, the Costa Cup sense. semifinals, it still would make sense yeah. to, play. to play the final Agreed. at the national stadium. Agreed. Um, because it is the best venue and in terms of proximity, it is still closer than the Montego Bay Sports Complex. So for all those who are complaining, I don't understand why you are complaining. All right. Yeah, that's it for Schoolboy Football on today's edition. But guess what? Coming up on At The Track this week, Thursday, Jamaica Super Philly and Horse of the Year Atomica tunes up for December's Rich Mute Mile with a dominant victory in the Jamaica Cup on a thrilling day of racing at Caymanus Park. All that excitement and another Patrick Husband stakes win in Canada coming up at the track Thursday on the Sportsbank Zone. Yo, it's a,